no, don't look at that. 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 Oh, no, no, no. No, that's her Christmas gift. <laughs> Hi, friends. This is Tracy from the Sewing Channel and Josephine. We are making it personal this Christmas. Get her, get her, get her, get her, get her. I go get her. Mm. Enough talking already. Let's get busy making it personal. <laughs> These name pillow wall hangings, they are absolutely darling. Grab a couple sheets of your printer paper and tape two of them together landscape style. I chose to do my letters in a block type format because it was the easiest. Since I had to do these freehand, the one tip I can give you is make sure that they're the same height and the same width. Here I'm just going to show you some reference measurements of one of my letters. Once you're happy with your letter cutout templates, it's time to choose some fabric that you're going to use. The one I chose was Veggie Tales because my granddaughter Josephine absolutely goes nuts over Veggie Tales. <laughs> so it was a real fun one to make for her. Lay the front part of your fabric, the one that's going to be seen when it's on the wall, right side up and lay your letters out on the fabric. Now you may need to fussy cut some parts like I did. There were certain characters that I wanted to make sure that I got in the letter, so I made sure that that was underneath the letter before I traced it and cut it. For the back of my letters, I chose to do a coordinating fabric in all different color fabrics that matched the front. My Veggie Tail fabric was a little pricey, so I'm glad I did that because it would have been a waste. Nobody's really going to see the back. Each letter will have a back and a front piece of fabric. To soften up these harsh corners on the letters, I rounded them out. Now I didn't round out the inside area right there on any of my letters. It was only mainly the outside areas and I got a lid from my kitchen and I just drew some curved lines along all of those harsh squared edges and then cut them out. Check out my new rotary cutter. The day that I filmed this, I received it in the mail, so I was just trying to get the hang of it. And I'll talk more about that in a different video. This is what you should have so far, two pieces of letters, a front and a back. I'm also making fabric hangers for each one of my letters, so I'm going to need a two inch strip piece of matching fabric of the back fabric. And however wide your letter is, that's going to be your other measurement. So I believe mine was like three and a half inches by two inches. So with that two inch part, you're going to fold up to the middle, fold the other side to the middle, and then fold them together, iron it, and put a top stitch right down the side there. And this is what it looks like after you have put your stitch in there. Everything is nice and together. I placed my hanger about one third down from the top of that letter. In the seam allowance only, you're going to stitch and tack that down on the side so we don't have to fuss with it if it moves or whatever. After you've stitched the hanger on the back only, you're going to take your front piece and put right sides together, the front and the back now. Pop a few pins in and then you're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance stitch all the way around the letter leaving about a three inch space right there. And you see I put my pin in the opposite direction so I know to stop there. And just take your time as you go around the curves, it's not a race. Because you could get off track if you try to go too fast around these curves. When you get to the end where that pin was in the opposite direction where you know you have to leave the space open, you're going to back stitch right before you end and that way things won't stretch and get out of whack when we go to stuff it. After everything's sewn down, go ahead and turn everything right side out and be sure to press your project at this point. I don't show that on camera, but I do press mine and I also press that seam allowance that's actually open. I press that as well so it makes a nice crease right there. I stuff my letters with polyfill and it seems to be the best. So you just grab a handful and start stuffing your letter. 
The best tip that I can give you here is make sure you're consistent with your polyfill, not only in all of your letters, but within the letter itself. You don't want big clumps in some areas and then nothing in another. So you really want to feel that out before you close things up. Now I didn't use the rubber coated gardening wire in the J. I was checking it there to see if it was too floppy. But I do use this rubber coated gardening wire in the S and in the E because it seemed to be a little flimsy and floppy. I don't know if it was because my letters were sort of skinny, but I'm gonna show you how I did the E. I cut the length of wire I needed and then I bent the ends down and put electrical tape over that. And during the stuffing stage, that's when I stuffed the wire inside of any of the letters if they needed it. And it's kind of neat because it does end up making them poseable and it's it works really well. Now, if your letters are fine, no worries. You don't need to use the wire. But like I said, the E and the S, I definitely needed it. Now let me show you how I troubleshot the letter O. Trust me on this one, you'll want to watch it if you're doing an O. You see, there's no way to sew these right sides together and leave one tiny opening somewhere because you just can't turn it right side out. It doesn't work. So this is how I did it. First, put the right sides together of the letter O and sew all the way around the entire outside of the letter O. Next, turn your letter O right side out and you see right there, I folded in all of those raw edges about a quarter inch and I pressed them down. It's tedious, but it works. After the inside is all stitched down with a top stitch, you leave a tiny opening for the stuffing part. And then you're just going to go ahead and stuff it just like you did any of the other letters. Hopefully I've covered all of the tricky parts and the things that I had to troubleshoot. Now once you get all of your letters stuffed and you have a tiny opening left, you're going to just hand stitch everything closed. I hate hand stitching, but sometimes you just got to do it. You'll just want to make sure that it's sort of invisible on the side there. I mean, nobody's really going to see it because it's going to be up on a wall. And that's what I kept telling myself because my hand stitching is like atrocious. But oh well, what are you going to do? So check it out. It is absolutely darling. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. I really am. And since this is a Christmas gift for my Josie, I don't want to give it to her now. Although I'm very, very tempted to. I'll wait until Christmas. All the double pack pillows at Joanne Fabrics were buy one get one free. A great deal, so I grabbed a few packages. Check out this monogram couch pillow that I made for Christmas this year. I mean, who wouldn't love this as a gift sitting on their couch come Christmas day? My measurements for this easy envelope pillow are for a 20 inch pillow form. On the two back pieces of this envelope pillow, you're going to fold down the edges of the shorter sides and make a hem. You fold that hem probably about a quarter inch two times, give it a good hot press, and then you're going to put a zigzag stitch all the way down right where I'm pointing. Let's take it to the sewing machine. You can see here I'm just going straight down. You could use a straight stitch if you'd like. And you can see here I had white bobbin thread. Be sure to match your top thread to your fabric color. For the letter, I found this really pretty flannel. It was a red flannel. It almost looked and felt like velvet. It was really nice. I traced my letter on the back of this fabric with pencil, and I made sure that the width of my letter was no more than about two and a half inches in width. And I kind of gauged it by how tall the letter was compared to my fabric once I fold it in half here. So you can see there, I'm just laying it up there to see where my letter is going to end on my fabric because you don't want to put it all the way to the top or the bottom of that buffalo check fabric for the front because you won't be able to see it properly. So you wanna make sure that it's spaced right in the middle. And that's how I did it. I put my letter on the fold so that I would have mirror images of the letter M, which is a really good idea if you like to be precise. <laughs> Mark the center of that front fabric by finger pressing it, just like you see me doing there, and then just set it aside. 
I am going to use this Pellon 807 Wonder Web to stick our monogrammed letter to our front fabric of our pillow. If you don't have the Wonder Web, you can always just sew it on. Just follow the outline of your letter and just sew it. But here you see I traced out the letter M on my Wonder Web and I'm cutting it out now. And then I'm going to place it on the back of my letter M. Be sure none of the Wonder Web is sticking out of the sides and lift up like you see me do there and pin it from the front side. And then once you get the pins in, you're gonna flip it over and then you're gonna pull out that front piece of fabric and lay that down and lay your M on top of that. Find the middle there first though and you know where the middle of the M is there where the point is and just follow that crease that you finger pressed along with the middle of the M. Take the pins out of the M and then repin all the layers together and now take it to your ironing station. Now per the directions, you're supposed to use a damp cloth over top of the Wonder Web between your iron and the fabric and all that. And so that's what I'm doing, just following the directions and whatever you use, just follow the directions. Once everything is securely married together and everything is sticking, there's no pieces coming up, it is time to assemble our envelope pillow. The front fabric is right side up. Take one of your back pieces and lay it over top right side down. So the back piece is right side down, so right sides are touching. And then you're going to take your other back piece and lay it on top of that right side down. Pin everything securely, then take it to your sewing machine and sew all around that outer edge. I don't show you on my sewing machine me sewing around that outer edge, but you can just imagine it, right? <laughs> Let me show you a trick to my fluffy pillows. I unzip my pillow form and then I shove a bunch of polyfill into the one side. And I only do one side because the back is flat and nobody ever sees it. And I want that front to be nice and puffy. And then I zip it back up and I take that tag off because that tag is noisy. <laughs> Open up the back of your envelope pillow and shove your pillow form in. Straighten everything out. And you have this fresh looking pillow all ready for the Christmas season, ready for gift giving. I mean, who wouldn't love this sitting on their couch this winter? I know I would love it. Tell me in the comments if this is some gift that you would like to receive. Check out this adorable vinyl zipper pouch with my grandbaby Josephine's picture and name on it. It's too cute for words, I'm telling you. Let me show you how I did it. Use any picture you want and even add text. You could even print something off the internet, whatever you'd like. Just make sure that you reverse the picture if you'd like, if you want it to look just like the regular picture and also reverse any words. Otherwise, they'll be backwards when you do this. I used the transfer medium from Mod Podge. It works specifically for photos. Here I'm just showing you where I would like to put it once the glue is on. And you need to do that so you know where you're going to put it when it's nice and wet full of glue. <laughs> Next I'm just going to make a pile of the Mod Podge and get my little foam brush and cover the top side of the picture, the colorful side. Now I didn't go real thick with this. They say to go a little bit thick, but I don't because I want it to dry quick. And typically it takes 24 hours for this to dry, but I dried it in front of the heater and I did it in four hours. But I don't know that I recommend that because you still have imperfections and different things. So I'm just impatient. So you might want to just follow the directions and wait for it. I also think it's better to do it thin because you don't want any of that glue seeping out the edges because it kind of stays on there if it dries like that. If by chance you do get some on the edge, just kind of clean it up like you see me do there with the paper towel, because you don't want that. Once the four hours was up, again, 24 hours is the recommended time, I took some water and a sponge and I lightly wet the top portion, the paper part. And then very lightly with your finger, you're going to rub away that paper. And it's, it's a tedious 
process for sure. I will warn you, do not rub too hard because you will rub the color right off because it's not fully cured yet. You're just getting that top layer of paper off and you don't want to pull the ink with it. So just very lightly work at it. After this round of water and rubbing, I did put it in front of the heater again so that it dried real good. And when it dries, you'll notice that there's a haze over top of the picture still, and that means that there's still paper on it. So here I'm just gonna pop in a photo real quick of it in front of the dryer. And you see how the picture is hazy, and that's because there's still paper on it. And here it is, here's the next round. I'm wetting it again. Now you can see the picture comes back to life once I wet it. But that haze is paper and it has to come off. So I do yet another um, attempt to get that paper off. And I'm sure I'll have to do that again here because after this, I went ahead and put it in front of the heater again. So it's a process. Okay, eight hours later, after a few more tries, there was a touch bit of cloudiness. So again, I'm showing you here at the very end, I'm just going in and rubbing the rest of that little tiny bit of paper off. There are a few spots where there's missing ink from when I first started it earlier in the day, but overall I think it looks pretty good. And I ended up using the hair dryer just to make sure that it was totally dry after using water that last time. So now it's time to finally laminate our little zipper pouch. I'm using Pellon vinyl and it's for fabric and I will link it down in the description box and just follow the directions. You can see I cut the vinyl the same exact size as the zipper pouch is going to be and then I'm just following the directions to iron it on and I'm only putting it on the outside of the pouch, not on the inside. Now you don't have to laminate this with any vinyl if you don't want to. The Mod Podge photo transfer says that you can leave it just as is and it's even washable. So I don't know, it's up to you, but I wanted to make it more durable. As you can see, I pinked around all of the edges and then I'm putting some double-sided tape at the top and that's where I'm going to stick my zipper. With the teeth side down and the pull to the left, I'm going to just stick it right on there. And then I'm gonna sew a stitch right down there and connect everything just like that and once the stitch is in I'm going to fold that toward the back of the pouch and then I'm going to put a top stitch right along right there. I love using a bigger zipper because it just gives me a lot of wiggle room. So now what you're going to do is put right sides together and flip that piece up to meet the other part of the zipper. Since my project wasn't really shifting, I didn't use the double-sided tape on this next step. I sewed right down the side just like I did before, and then I put a nice top stitch right there. Next, put your zipper pull right in the center or in the vicinity somewhere of the middle of your bag, and then we're going to turn it inside out and sew up the sides. Here I'm just cutting off those tails and I'm going to pin them down to the sides a little bit and put a clip there and then I'm gonna sew right down the side of that zipper pouch. Next you're going to sew down the other side and be sure to reinforce up by those zipper pull areas because we wanna make sure that that doesn't come apart. Here's a trick for ironing vinyl. Get your iron really hot, iron your ironing board, and then put some cotton inside your vinyl bag, and then rub it over the heated ironing board. It takes the wrinkles right out, no problem. I'm loving this zipper pouch, check it out. I can put all my little baby Josephine's little ribbons and little bows inside of this little zipper pouch, and we can take it on the go, or put whatever we want in it. I mean, it's crazy cute, right? Here's the measurements right here. And I just love the bright colors and I love how the vinyl brings out all the brightness of the picture. I'm just loving it. So you tell me, did I make it personal this Christmas? Let me know down in the comments below. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.